Uh, Francine, I would like to start with you. A uh, very impressive library, the Library of Birmingham. And uh, we very often see examples on the internet and from other speakers of very big libraries. Also, usually also myself, when I go to other conferences, uh, before Future Library, uh, I was uh, talking about the very public library and I was always surrounded by really big libraries. And Veria was uh, very small among them. So this is also the reality in Greece. We don't have big libraries, we have small libraries, uh, excluding the example of uh, the library that is currently under construction. The rest of the Greek environment in, uh, of in uh, the library domain in Greece, we have small libraries. So could you tell me what lessons can Greek librarians learn from the Birmingham Library? Um, I think it's, that's why I started. It's about people, place and purpose. I think it's very important that, uh, and that's why I also showed you the, for instance, the, the old National Library, the existing uh, National Library here in Athens. I think it's very essential, that, and that what is in a way not inviting such a building. It's not welcoming for everybody. You feel almost that you have to be very intellectual to enter. So I think if you're big or small, because I totally realize that the Birmingham one is huge. It's the biggest of Europe. Um, and it's a city of one million people. But that the smaller ones um, are, that they are very open, that they are welcoming, that they are from all generations, that you, that there is no um, trample, yeah, I don't know the English word, that there is no, to, huh? Yeah, there's no threshold that you really want, that it's very <coughs> open. And I think also the atmosphere from inside is very important. Like the, li the librarians are not like positions uh, immediately in the front of the entrance, almost like a police agent. No, they are the helping you. They want you to come in. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different attitude. And also why I said a library is not about books, it's about people and how people, how can you de help them to develop themselves? And it's very much important uh, for the young generation, but even for um, older people. What you see, what's happening in Europe, and I think it's very essential, um, is that I see it in my own country, but I'm absolutely sure it's part of all of Europe, that a lot of people who have uh, less jobs, they start um, a little company by themselves, so they are one person uh, company. They're very lonely. They should meet each other, and I hope also the, the Niarchus uh, Library will be play an important role in it. But they want to meet each other in the library. Mm -hmm. That there is Wi Fi, that they can go there, maybe they have a computer or they bring their own laptop. Or, um, so it's, that's what I also want to say. It's part of the economic development of a city, of a country, um, mm. and that's why it's so essential to be open for everybody. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, John, uh, I have a question. Your title, the title of your presentation, Creativity, Money, Love. Uh, can we have learning, especially in Greece, with just creativity and love, but no money? money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How? Good. A few people have asked that, actually. I think it's, a, it's not that different in the UK at the moment. There's not a lot of money around there either. I think, I think it was a, the subtitle of the, the book was Learning for the 21st Century. So I think we were... Um, and getting love in the title was a real struggle, actually. I tell you, we had to fight to get that in. Um, but I think, I think, yes, absolutely. I mean, I think in a way, um, it's obviously money makes things much easier. But, but some of the skills required for the future, and I mentioned it very briefly, this mm -hmm. thing about... It's that adjustment from assuming that people are going to be able, there are jobs for people to take, which are out there, and you just need to get people ready for that, to a position whereby people are going to have to start their own things, their own social enterprises, their own businesses, um, you know, come together in different kind of forms, whether that's commercially or as a not-for-profit organization and so forth. And I think younger people are getting that much more quickly than some of the institutions that work with them are getting it. And they're realizing, in a way, that they're not going to 
walk into a job in a multinational. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to make their own thing in the future. I see. Uh, one more question from my side, uh, again about money. Uh, it, it, this came from the audience. <coughs> How easy it is to build a library, which is uh, 50 square meters the size, it's a very small library, which is functional, but uh, still it is uh, very impressive, and we don't have to spend a lot of money to, to build this library. Maybe it's the most important is to create uh, just space. Maybe if you have a very small library, just please put all the books on the walls <laughs> and create a big space where people can meet. Even bring, otherwise even, could be even funny, collect old uh, furniture that have some identity and put, put, uh, put light and put it in. So it's really a welcoming space where you want to s uh, inspire people. It's ju just not, of course, uh, uh, money is important, but, but if you don't have money, be creative and care about people. How, pe how you want, th is the library a place where people can meet each other and inspire each other and make it more empty? Um, yes. One of the most inspiring stories I've heard about libraries recently is from Colombia, from Medellin in Colombia where, I mean, Medellin was a disaster area 10 years ago. It was run by drug gangs. It was a terrible crime rate. And what they did there as part of their strategy to make the city better was to build small libraries in the worst places in the city. So they didn't build them in the places where there was already demand. They put them in the places which are the poorest parts, the most crime-ridden parts. And it worked, you know, as part of the strategy. It was extraordinary. I mean, basically, people were, first of all, very surprised that the city were building a library there. But on the other hand, people started to use it, and it was a crucial part mm -hmm. of changing people's views about their own city. Um, so I think you know it was a really pioneering kind of approach. There's lots of stuff on online about it as well. Really interesting strategy. Thank you, Spicia. We have many questions from our from the uh, attendees. I would like to ask something to Francine. Uh, have you observed any vandalism and damage? to the huge library uh, like Birmingham, I believe that the majority of people in Greece who would va vandalize a big library without control, security. I think we should educate the community. What do you think about that? Maybe it's good, that's why I mentioned this on YouTube, this video. People, they don't totally, there's totally no um, damage. People are so proud that this space was made for them and they really feel like it. It's really, again, that was made by public money and they really feel that it came back to the public. And, uh, and at the same time, um, uh, it's, it's made, I always say, it's bold and delicate. At the same time, I think if you select <coughs> furniture, or materials, you always have to be aware that it's public, so that you, a lot of people use it. So it should also be a little bit bold. Yeah, don't make it too fragile. The people, to be honest, they, they love it. Yes. For many of us, it's not a little bit of a little bit of Mr. Kiefer, what is the role of Facebook in the places that you refer in your talk? At what your what talk? is the role? Mm -hmm. I think it's quite interesting. I mean, obviously Facebook does all kinds of different things. It's people looking at pictures of stupid animals and all that kind of stuff. But also, what, what it has done is provided a platform for people to find others who, in a sense, have similar interests to them and think like them. So, I mean, what the, the example I mentioned, which is this people talking about their music collections, I, I thought it was kind of interesting, but then I suddenly realized how many people were involved in this, in how many different countries, and how many different ages, different backgrounds, and so forth, and how, also how interesting it was that people were giving each other information, so almost doing short lectures about a particular kind of artist or a particular kind of music they liked. So it's kind of fascinating, really, and just think, think, kind of trying to think this would be very hard to do in any other environment apart from doing it in an online environment. So it's kind of inspiring from that kind of point of view. And that, as I say, there are lots of other examples of people doing this. But it needs a kind of something where people are like fans, actually, or like get obsessed with a particular kind of area. 
Um, and what's happened now is that some of the people who are doing it have started doing live versions of it. So they've been hiring rooms and they've been doing talks about their favorite artists and so forth. But what's interesting is there's no experts. So I think as soon as anyone comes in who might be a music journalist or might be a professor of music, they don't, nobody's interested in them. They'd rather hear what the ordinary people had to say rather than hearing what the experts had to say. So it's a real bottom-up kind of um, phenomenon, I think. Okay. I like that, that kind of talk we have. But I have a lot of people who 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 have a lot of people στη διάρκεια των διαλυμάτων, γιατί σίγουρα ναι. δεν μπορούν να απαντηθούν όλες οι ερωτήσεις. Και επίσης αυτό που μπορούμε να κάνουμε είναι να μαζέψουμε όλα τα ερωτήματα, να τα δώσουμε στους ομιλητές και να τα απαντήσουν και να τα αναρτήσουμε κάποια στιγμή στο website μετά. Okay. Uh, uh, I have a demanding one here. A word on school libraries, please. <laughs> See a school space built as a library. What do you think? School place as a library. Transform schools into libraries. A word? Oh, oh, but, that, but that's what I think that schools should have a much... What, what we try to do in, in my own country is that we analyze that a lot of schools are only used, I don't know if it's the same here, between nine and three. So they said we should use that same building from at least from nine to nine. So, so they start or to bring in, again, libraries, or maybe uh, use it also for um, even for the, uh, uh, the parents in the evening, or that they can study uh, if they have no uh, work, or that they, uh, it's even um, we call it daycare for children or whatever. But the schools, like libraries, should have play an important role. Even the churches, to be honest, an uh, important role um, in the neighborhoods. I agree with that. And but. You should look at every school by itself. What are the possibilities? That mm -hmm. would be my advice. Okay. Well, I have a question for Mrs. Huben, but I don't think that she's the person who, the right person to reply. Uh, thank you for your presentation. They say, uh, can you tell us what will happen after building the National Library in Athens to the old place? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know even who owns it. Who owns the old library? They will keep. Okay, you they will, will keep, keep it. the library. Okay. okay. Yes, Francine. Uh, w w when did you start designing the Library of Birmingham? Um, five years ago. Five years ago, uh, and it opened uh, a few Sep months ago, yeah. this September. September. Uh, what mistakes did you make? What? What mistakes did you make? Um, and uh, what can you learn from, uh, from I all went these? last week with the librarian who is Brian Gambles through the whole building. You know what we were thinking, yeah, because we did together, of course. You always do a, a library, you design it together with the librarian. You never do it as an architect alone. You really do it together with your clients. And you try to be visionary. <laughs> Uh, one thing we, I think, never realized uh, is that everybody wants to go to the top of the building. <laughs> um, I never realized that, that there's even more people in the building than we accepted, uh, expected um, and that people look very happy. And there is some little, yeah, we didn't until, sometimes we said, oh, this, because there's now so many people coming up, we didn't prepare that space that everybody wanted to go up. And there's other things, I think what is very essential, for, but that's maybe more for the librarian, you have to realize they also came from a very old fashioned library. The change that the staff has to make is also very essential. Again, it, it, a library is not just about books, it's about people, and part of that people, of course, is the staff. So you really have mm -hmm. also to develop and take your staff as being part of that change. So that's why I think it's so great that all of you are here. Thank you. And John, what what advice would you give to Greek librarians 
so they can develop an environment that fosters creativity. And skills, I have here skills. Skills, it's the same question. Some of that's making connections across different disciplines, actually. It's to, you know, there's some very interesting, I, mean, I was here a few weeks ago at the IETM conference at the um, uh, Technopolis, and there was some interesting grassroots activity in terms of arts activity, is to make connections. I think, you know, if you can offer a space to somebody, and if you can offer some time to somebody, an opportunity to share their skills as well, it's to, <laughs> To, to mix it up as much as possible. Think about, in a way, think, although a library is primarily something that receives visitors, think about it as being a public space that you have to program. You know, make sure that there are interesting activities. Make sure that people can program their own activities as well, things that interest them. But I think it is making connections and, and allowing other creative people, if you like, to use the building as well, both public and professionals. Um, okay. The more the better, I think. That flexible use thing is so important. Flexible. It's about flexible. people. <laughs> Απλά επειδή δεν έχουμε πολύ χρόνο, yeah. εγώ να ζητήσω συγγνώμη που δεν απαντήθηκαν όλα τα ερωτήματα. Εμεί θα κάνουμε προσπάθεια να απαντούνται όλα τα ερωτήματα ολονών μα. Ωραία. <laughs> λοιπόν, uh, thank you very much for your time uh, and for all the interesting things you have shared with us and the answers you have given. I hope to see you again soon in Greece. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.